Hey everyone, in this video, let's learn some tips for cleaning up our masks, whether we're applying filters or local adjustments into specific areas, or we're modifying multiple layers in a composite. So my first tip for cleaning up masks is to use your masking brush. The masking brush works really well in general cleanup scenarios, especially if you're not looking to get too specific with your masking. So for example, let's just go in here and we'll just add on a texture that we can mask in to our building here. So we'll just add a filter. I'll add the textures filter. And I'll just add a custom texture that I imported here. So I've chosen this graffiti texture here and really the whole goal with this texture would be to make it appear as if this building here is graffitied or tagged in some way just to give the scene a little bit more interest and really just to provide you with an example of, of how to use the, the masking brush. So what we're going to do here is we're going to ensure that this texture is only applied to the building. To do that, let's just head into our masking options for our textures filter and we'll head down into the mask AI menu and let's head into the architecture option. Let's enable that to ensure that is selected there. Then we'll head over to this paint out paint in menu and let's make sure we have paint in selected there. And that will remove this textures filter and the texture within it away from the sky and the foreground and only apply it to the building there. So now if we head into the masking options and we view this mask for our texture, remember white reveals and black conceals in masking. So we can see that this white section is revealing that texture onto the building. And this black section is concealing that texture from our scene. So if we zoom in here to our building, in this top section, we want to remove that graffiti texture from our roof so that we can bring back the original roof and make things look a little bit more natural. An easy way to do this would be to use our masking brush and just manually paint it away from the top part of our roof. So I'm just going to hit B on my keyboard. B is an easy way to quickly grab your masking brush so that you can easily access it and paint in or paint out your masks. So with my masking brush selected, I'm going to make sure I have the right mode selected in my top tool modifier bar. So I'm going to go to my mode menu and I'm going to make sure that my mode is set to paint out. Remember, I want to paint away this texture so that it's concealed from the scene on this top part of the building. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to modify some of these brush settings to fit the masking job. So with my size, I think I'm going to lower it down a little bit to around 150. I can also lower the brush size with the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard. The left bracket key will decrease the brush size while the right bracket key will increase the brush size. I'm going to keep my feathering at 100. This is going to give my brush edge some softness to ensure that it blends in naturally with the other areas of the mask. Then for my opacity, I'm going to increase this to 100 so that I am brushing away 100% of that texture from my roof. And then I'm going to make sure my flow is at 100 as well, just to again ensure that my masking brush is painting away 100% of this texture filter and I'm not leaving anything behind. And with those controls modified how I want them, I'm just going to head into this mask view again to demonstrate a really helpful tip when using the masking brush. So you can see we have our mask here and we can sort of differentiate between the bottom part of the building and the roof section. So an easy way to just sort of draw a straight line with your masking brush is to hold down shift. So to demonstrate that, I'm just going to paint right here. So I'll just paint away that section there. And then I'm holding down shift on my keyboard and I'll head over to this side and then I'll paint again. And so you can see there, it's created a straight line with my masking brush. Now I can continue that if I want to. So if I wanted to, I could just hold down shift again 
and I can continue this same method of painting it away. So for example, if I wanted to paint a straight line on this bottom section, I could just paint there, hold down shift, go to the other or the opposite side rather, and then just click again and it will paint a straight line. And then from there, you've already created your next point, you could say, so you can then hold down shift and then continue on your masking cleanup. So I think it looks okay from there. Let's just check the actual photo first. But if we view this, I think it's looking nice. And that bit of feathering helps to blend that graffiti texture in with the building anyway. So not a big deal if it's over a little bit. We kind of need it to be a little bit blended over so that it looks more natural. We'll zoom out there a little bit there. And you could, of course, always paint it away manually without using that straight line method and holding down shift. So if we just view this photo and we wanted to remove this from different sections, we could just paint that away by just clicking and brushing out general regions of that mask. And remember, using those keyboard shortcuts, using the bracket keys on your keyboard to lower your brush size. And also, I don't think I mentioned it before, but shifting between your modes can be done with shift and X on your keyboard. So the bracket keys and shift and X are really helpful when you're modifying and using your masking brush. Let's talk about our next tip for cleaning up masks. And I've brought back just that area that I painted away so that we just have this texture on the bottom part of the building. And we have the texture overlaid onto these windows here and it looks quite unnatural. So we need to remove that from these windows. And a great way to do that, which brings me on to the second tip for cleaning up masks, is to use your perfect brush. The perfect brush allows you to target specific colors within your photograph so that you can paint away specific tones within, within buildings or within people, within cars. And it's sort of the quote unquote paint inside the lines tool. So the perfect brush actually lives inside of your masking brush. So with our masking brush selected, which if it's not, you can grab it by hitting B on your keyboard. We're going to head up to our top tool modifier bar and we're going to enable the perfect brush here by just selecting it. You can also grab it by holding down command and hitting R on your keyboard. So I have the perfect brush enabled and I'm going to modify a couple of the settings for that perfect brush. I can do that by hitting this gear icon here. And in the perfect brush settings here, let's talk about the first one, which is color threshold. And this is going to determine the perfect brush's sensitivity to color whenever you're painting in or you're painting away specific colors within your scene. Now, a lower number is going to be more precise and a higher number is going to paint away more of those colors. I typically keep this around 10. We then have transition, and this is going to modify the transition between the colors that you paint in and the colors that stay within the scene. Now, the higher the number, the more natural of a transition or blend you'll have with the perfect brush. I'm just going to keep this around 12 or so. So let's just turn those options off there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head in here into these windows that need to be cleaned up. And for this, I'm going to increase my brush size quite a bit just to sort of showcase how the perfect brush works. So you can see I have a really quite large brush size. And all I'm going to do to target the dark areas in those windows is I'm going to place that minus symbol that's in the middle of my brush. I'm going to place that on top of whatever region I'm trying to paint away. So whether that's a minus symbol or that's a plus symbol, it works the same way. So I'm just going to place the middle of that brush over whatever color, tone, or region that I want to paint away from my scene. And I'm just going to brush. You can see it's painted 
that texture away from that window, but it hasn't painted it away from the wall surrounding that window. And so I'll just continue this here, painting this texture away from these different regions. And I'm just going to zoom out. And to do this actually really quickly, I can zoom out quite a bit and I can increase my brush size all the way. And if I place this middle of my brush directly over a dark region, such as this region there, and I brush, it will then remove that from anywhere that my brush is covering. So if I go in here and I view my mask, you can see I've painted away all of the textures from those windows really easily by using my perfect brush. So I'll just undo a couple of those here to demonstrate. So you can see I have the middle of my brush over that window and I'm just going to click and it's removed it from those darker areas. It's targeting those really dark blacks and dark grays within those windows, those colors, and it's removing it from the mask. So if we view our photo here and we turn the texture off and on, it's looking much more natural because we've removed it from being overlaid on top of those dark window sections there. Now, another way you can use the perfect brush because it targets specific colors is you can use it to paint away some of the mask from the textures in this building here. So for example, we have some texture in the brick there and in different sections of this building and watch as I go over them with the perfect brush. So I'll make my brush size a bit smaller there. And I'll just paint on different sections of the wall here, just to bring in a little bit more of the original texture back into the scene. Maybe that's a little too much, but we can find sort of sweet spots in here to bring back some of these original textures. You can see now, even with just that mask, we've brought back a lot of that original texture within the building. So now if we view our texture that we've added, um, sort of a tongue twister there, but if we view that texture that we've added on top, it looks a lot more natural now because we have a lot more of these original details coming out from the building there. My next tip for cleaning up your masks is to use the refine brush. The refine brush is an excellent tool for refining the edges of your mask around really intricate details and sections such as hair or branches, things like that. So we have this wedding photo here and we have a really boring backdrop around our bride. So let's add in a much more interesting one and then we can refine to ensure that the hairs and Things like that look natural within the scene. So let's go into the effects tab. I'm just gonna add a filter. And again, I'll add on a texture into the scene. So I've added on a texture and I'm just going to modify my mode here to replace so that we have the entirety of that texture being seen on our photo. And what I wanna do here is similar to what I did in the first tip is just mask this away from our subject. So we're going to go into the masking options for the textures filter. We use our mask AI menu and we'll choose people. And because our default mode is set to paint out, all we have to do is choose apply. So it's looking great. Everywhere around her looks really nicely done here. We don't really have to do too much masking cleanup here, but there are a couple sections that do need help here. 
So if we go into this section near her hair, and even if we view this, we can see that these sections don't reveal that texture that we want to behind them. And also if we zoom into this section down here, we're not revealing that original texture or we're not revealing that new texture behind her. All we have there is the original one and it looks a little bit unnatural. So to clean this mask up here, let's go in here to these two sections and let's use our refine brush. So to grab our refine brush or any of our refine tools, I'm gonna head over here to the left side and I'm going to grab the refine section. And I'm going to grab this first brush here. This is the refine brush. So with our refine brush, we need to ensure that we have the correct mode selected. We have paint out, paint in, and auto. Now you can of course switch between these with shift and X on your keyboard. Now paint out is going to paint away those different filters, adjustments, or even a layer mask away from the specific areas that you're trying to clean up. Paint in is going to paint those into those areas that are more intricate. And then auto is going to determine whether it should paint in or paint out for you. I'm going to choose in this option, I'm going to choose paint in. And the reason I'm choosing paint in is because we need to paint in the texture into these more intricate sections of the original photograph. So with our mode set to paint in, all I have to do is just paint this in, just like we did earlier with our brush. And there we go. It's cleaned up that section and it's painted that texture into those more intricate details. And if we view our mask, you can see those intricate sections now have that texture revealed onto them. Do the same thing with this side. And there we go. So now if we zoom out, it's looking much more natural and it's revealing that new texture behind our, our bride and we don't have the original one there. One thing I want to do real quick is just use a technique we did in the last tip and just use the masking brush and its perfect brush setting here to paint away or paint in rather the texture onto this section. So I'll switch my mode, make sure my perfect brush is selected. And all I have to do is just paint over that color. And there we go. My next tip for cleaning up masks is to use the blur masks tool. The blur masks tool is excellent for blurring the edges of your masks. If you have hair or trees or really intricate details within your masks, this is a really great way to blur those edges so that they can blend better on top of new environments. So let's go into the effects tab and let's add on a texture very similar to what we did in the last tip. So I've applied that texture here and I've gone in and I've chosen the replace mode so that I can see the entirety of that texture on the photo. Let's now just use the textures masking options and we'll go into the mask AI menu and we'll remove the texture from our model. So now what I want to do is I want to paint away the texture here from a couple of these different areas on top of the person. And the reason I want to do that is because I know there's a couple of these different sections here that have some hair that I want to reveal onto the scene. So I'm just painting these different sections back in so that I can see these other areas of hair. So just like that. So I've revealed a little bit more of 
her hair there. But you can see it's very intricate. It's very intricate hair. And to mask this, it would be, or to manually mask this away and clean it up, it would be really, really difficult. So this is where we're going to be using a couple of the other tools that we employed in the last couple tips to help us out in this edit as well. So before we get into the blur mask tool, let's just go in and use our refine brush here to remove those intricate areas from our mask. So I'll just go into my refine brush here. And I'm going to make sure that my mode again is set to paint in because I want to paint that texture into these more intricate areas of my original photo. So we'll just paint over those sections just like we did in the last edit. And the refine brush does a really good job of painting that texture into those more intricate areas of her hair, but we can see it just gets a little bit crunchy in some of the sections there, and it just doesn't look natural. And so what we can do to fix that and sort of combat that is we can use our blur mask tool. So let's go into our top tool modifier bar for our refine tools, and we're going to select the blur mask tool, which you can also grab by hitting L on your keyboard. So I'm going to select this here. And in our mode menu, we have three modes. We have remove, add, and normal. The remove option here is going to attempt to darken up the brighter areas on the edges of the mask as it blurs. The add option here is going to attempt to lighten up those areas on the edges of the mask as it blurs. And then with normal, this is going to attempt to darken and lighten the areas on the edges of your mask. Now, I typically use this normal or add option here. So I'm just going to use normal for this. We can modify our size here. I'm going to keep it around 50. And then the amount is going to modify how much of that blur you want into the edges of your mask. I'm going to keep this around 30 or so. And so now watch as I just paint this on the edges here. You can see it gives it a much softer feel and it blends in much more naturally with the environment that we are modifying. So if we just go into our history here, I'll just choose to go back just to the refine, just to show you the edges there. And then if we go back to the blurriness of the, or the blurred, mask tool that's the edges there so you can see it helps to alleviate those harsher edges and blend the edges into that environment much better so this is with the blur and this is without And so with our mask cleaned up here, let's just head down into the textures filter itself. And I'm just going to increase the brightness a bit there to ensure that the two layers, if you will, to the photo, the model and the texture look natural. Then we'll add one last filter here and I'll just bring in a LUT. My next tip for cleaning up masks is to use the chisel mask tool. The chisel mask tool is excellent for cleaning up the edges of your mask by chiseling them down to remove any halos or any excess edging that you may not want. So what I'm going to do here just real quick is just remove the model here from our scene by using the OG quick mask tool. And with our mask created, we've successfully removed the subject from the background. 
there's a couple areas we need to clean up in here. So let's just zoom in. And let's first just, again, employ a couple of those other techniques before we get into the chisel mask tool. So I'm just going to use my masking brush here to clean that section up. So I'll just hit B on the keyboard. And I'll paint just that away there, just to clean that up. And there's a section there where it didn't actually paint it in. So we'll just paint that in there. And everything looks fine there. I think there was a section down here that needs a little bit of cleaning up right there. And so I'll just again, sort of just manually paint it and it doesn't have to be perfect. Cool. And then this section here, we'll just give it a little bit more love. Doesn't have to be too perfect there. And then everything else I think looks fine. I'm just going to paint, oops. I'm just going to actually just paint that little strand away there. And it looks good. So. We've cleaned up the mask as much as we could with just the manual brush there, but we have these little edges going around the scene and they look quite unnatural. And sort of to highlight those, let's just add in a new color fill layer and I'll just make it white. And we'll drag that below our main layer here. And so if we zoom in, especially it's, in this section of the photo, we have this sort of dark halo around the scene there. And as we move around and down, it sort of is persistent throughout the edging of our mask in certain areas, but especially up here. So what we can do to fix that here is we're actually going to use the chisel mask tool. So we'll go into our refine tools and we'll grab this middle tool. This is the chisel mask tool. You can also grab it by holding down shift and hitting H on your keyboard. So with the chisel mask tool, I'm going to use my menu here, my mode menu rather, to choose which mode I want. And because we want to remove this edge away from our mask, we're going to choose remove. Now, if you wanted to paint in some of the edging back into the scene, you could use add to do that. But because we want to remove this edge from our scene, we're going to choose remove. We can then modify the size and then the amount there. And amount is just how much of that edge you want to chisel away from your mask. So now with my masking brush or my chisel mask tool brush here, I'm just going to brush this onto that area that needs to be cleaned up. And you can see that by painting that on there, it just chisels down that edge and I can use it to remove any of that haloing that I don't want within the scene. So if I bring some of that back there, just to demonstrate that again, again, I'm just using this chisel mask tool to brush on to the scene and remove the edges of the mask there. And then it can blend in much more naturally with the environment that it's in. Now, one thing you can do with the chisel mask tool that's really incredibly helpful is you can actually chisel away the entirety of the edge. So let me just undo that brushing I did earlier. And so let's go to this top tool modifier bar here. And if I put my mouse over the chisel mask tool and I double click that, you can see that it removes the edge from the entirety of the mask. So I'll just redo that there. 
and we'll double click the tool again. And you can see I don't have to, have to actually brush onto the entirety of the edge of my mask. I can just double click that tool and it will remove that amount from the edge to successfully get rid of any of that haloing that I don't want. And there we go. We've successfully cleaned up that mask and we have a much more believable and natural composite here. So let's just add in sort of a fun, playful layer here. I'll just bring this behind her and let's just modify the position of this here. Make it a little bit bigger there. And we have a nice little composite here by going in and cleaning up that mask with the chisel mask tool. A really great tool for again, just chiseling down those edges so that you don't have any haloing going on around the edges of your mask. And my last tip for cleaning up masks is to feather the mask to blend in the edges so that they're not so harsh or jagged on your scene. So, for example, let's say we want to apply a local adjustment to our cat friend here. I'll just hit K on my keyboard to grab my super select AI tool. I'll select the cat. I'll right click and let's add an adjustment here. And let's just increase the contrast quite a bit. So by increasing the contrast with a local adjustment and applying it to our cat specifically, it's doing a great job of increasing that contrast in there and it gives a little bit more punchiness to our animal friend but we can see up here that we have a little bit of an awkward edge going on around the top and especially this section down here by the whiskers and if we were to go in here and modify this even more let's say we modify the exposure and and things like that it can make that edge even more abrupt so what we can do to fix this and help with that sharp edge there is we can go into the masking options for whatever filter adjustment or layer we're, we're modifying. And let's go into the masking options and let's go to this feathering slider and we'll pull that up and adjust. So I'll pull that back to zero and there's it at 100. So let me just zoom down here to that other section by the whiskers. As you can see, it has that really awkward spot there, but as we pull up on the feathering, it softens that edge and makes it blend a lot more naturally. And then if we view the entirety of our photograph and view our mask, we can see that with the Super Select AI, it's done a really awesome job of finding the cat there but sometimes we need a bit more soft, blurry edge. So let's just pull up on that feathering there and we can make it a lot more natural. Those are some tips for cleaning up masks. Remember the masking brush is great for general cleanups. It's an excellent tool for when you're not looking to get too specific. If you're looking to get more specific with your masking brush, I would recommend using the Perfect Brush. From there, if you're looking to refine your mask and you have intricate details, I would recommend using the Refine Brush. If you need to blur the edges of your mask, I would go for that Blur Mask tool. If you're looking to get rid of haloing or edges that are protruding out of the mask, go for that chisel mask tool. And remember, you can always double click the tool to chisel the entirety of that edge around your mask. Lastly, feathering the mask will ensure that it blends in much more naturally with the environment that you're putting in it.